Hey everybody, it's Chris Bumber here for Joe Blow. I am at the Elemental Press Day at Pixar headquarters in San Francisco. If anything though, I think his direction with how clear he was mm -hmm. gave us the best direction we possibly could have got because I almost wonder if him and I were in the room what that would sound like if maybe we had too much chemistry or I don't know, I feel like it's what different. What does too much chemistry sound like? <laughs> it was just, it was a lot of fun to be honest trying to boil down those ingredients uh, to get to a certain look that could find that balance because when we tried real fire, she looked terrifying. She looked like, like a, a demon. Like a woman on fire. Yes, yeah. oh yes. There was yeah. like, like, a, like, oh, this would look work well in the Lord of the Rings, you know, um, but. They wrote a good script. I mean, honestly, a lot of the, the tears that I actually shed in the booth aren't like really in the movie. Like, like uh -huh. the beach, the beach scene. Did you cry like, in it? Couldn't help it. Meet the residents of Element City. Air usually has their head in the clouds. Oh, my new jacket! Earth can be a little seedy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing weird going on here. Uh, just a little pruning. So, okay, something I've always been really curious about with Pixar movies, with voice casts, because you two have such great chemistry in the movie. Thanks. Were you guys recording at all together, though? Or were you always separate? No, no but... We did have Pete Sohn on our side. Pete Sohn not yes. only is a wonderful director, he is a very accomplished voiceover actor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he, he did his thing. <laughs> he did a great job. If anything, though, I think his direction with how clear he was mm -hmm. gave us the best direction we possibly could have got. Because I almost wonder if him and I were in the room, what that would sound like. If maybe we had too much chemistry or... I don't know. I feel like it's what different. What does too much chemistry sound like? <laughs> I've definitely had it where... <laughs> Like characters are just getting to know each other for the first time, but then because I've been chummy with someone in person, we're in the booth, we're like, ha, 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 and the director's like, no, 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 like, cut that out. <laughs> so I don't know, but Pete did so good with, you know, getting us to where we needed to go that even when I heard it back, I was like, it really sounds like we were exactly in the booth. Yeah, room. yeah, yeah, got me fooled. <laughs> Water is always getting into something. <laughs> How they how they make you cry so much? <laughs> oh, so good at it. Too. It's actually like very easy for me <laughs> to break. You'd be surprised, but very easy for me to like break out in tears. Um, no, you know it, they wrote a good script. I mean, honestly, a lot of the the tears that I actually shed in the booth aren't like really in the movie. Like, like uh -huh. the beach the beach scene. Did you cry like, in that? Couldn't help it. I, I get that. Couldn't help it. There are times when Peter was like, you need to not be crying in this because it's not a crying part. But like, I feel like us oh. as the consumers and actors, I'm like, how can I not be crying so during the script, this? The, 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 the script is so good. John Hilberg, Brenda Sue, uh, yeah. Kat Lickle, like they wrote a, like a, just a, such a well-crafted script with such emotion. And like it just, it just feels so full. It's, you can't help but to like get moved by it. Yeah. Have you both always been huge? I mean, I imagine you must've been Pixar fans. Yeah, what? I've yes. been a huge Pixar fan since I was a kid. What's your favorite like... Pixar movie besides Elemental? <laughs> Aside from Elemental, which is a very good point to say, because yeah. uh, it's my favorite, uh, Up. You do love Up. I love Up. Of oh, course, I yeah. love Up. I love Up. It's so great. And Carl I'm an State. Inside Out girl. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, I'm interesting. Both girl. good answers. Yeah. <laughs> but also, yeah, Carl's Date, which Carl's is a continuation Day. of Up, is the short film that's going to be before our film, and it's... It's great. Just as heartwarming oh. as the first film. <laughs> so another thing I want to ask too, one of, the, one of the things about this movie that's really cutting edge is the animation. The animation does things that I've never yes. seen before in yeah. a film. But you both humanize your characters so much that after a while I forget that I'm looking at fire and I'm looking at water and I'm looking at, at people. Yeah, um, cool. As voice actors, and you've both done a lot of, of, of live action too, mostly live action. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? How do you calibrate your performance? What's the, cha what's the challenge there to make this character real? I think voiceover is a really mentally creative process mm -hmm. because when you are acting behind a screen, you know, you have your setting, you have your costume, you have your other actor in there with you. The world is kind of already painted for you. But when it comes to animation, and I think Peter was just amazing with helping us kind of create this world in our heads, Lost. it's like, okay, you have to picture yourself on this train. You have to like mm -hmm. kind of set the scene for yourself. And I think 
it takes a lot of experimentation or experimenting experimentation what am i saying um experiment <laughs> experimentation yeah, yeah. um it takes a lot of experimenting because sometimes what i think i am saying is not how it's going to come across on a big screen out of ember's mouth maybe yeah i mean honestly there's just different kinds of freedoms um for me uh, you know with the voice like you have the mic where you are and you can't stray too far from it but everything else is fair game it doesn't matter what you're looking like it doesn't matter what your body's contorting into like the mm -hmm. b-roll of me <laughs> i'd love to see it it's, it's so crazy um and it wouldn't work on camera mm -mm. like it wouldn't it just wouldn't work but with voiceover it's it's the voice so whatever gets me there works it's the best mm -hmm. and fire as ordered we run a little hot One thing I wanted to mention too is I think people, you know, during the pandemic, they got used to watching Pixar movies mm. at home. But this really feels like a return to the big screen. The fact that it's so immersive, the animation, the 3D. Mm -hmm. Have you both had the chance yet to see it on the big screen to see the finished version? We've seen it a couple times. We've really? seen it a couple of times. Yeah. And also, I think part of why it's so important to see this on screen in the big screen, not only is it just visually stunning, all the little details they, they put into the world, into all the characters, you can't really see that on a computer no. or a tablet. That's something that, you know, if you're watching the film and your eye goes left, you're like, oh, I noticed that, you know, this building is actually a joke or some kind of pun that they yeah. put in there. There's so many things I keep on finding in this movie. Like, even even just, our fifth time. Yeah. Yeah. I, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just no, like, no, no, there's no. so many things that I'm just like, oh, that's a new one. That's that's a new thing I never saw before. Oh, that's that's a detail I never discovered before. It's, it's so cool. Mm -hmm. I also find movies these days, in, in a lot of ways, have gotten very cynical. But a Pixar mm. movie is never going to be cynical, and this is definitely not cynical. Do you think that, in some ways, it feels like this like the, this kind of open-hearted thing can only ever exist in animation anymore, though? Because they're just not doing no. this in live action. No, no, no. I don't think it's well, huh, not if I got something to do with it, man. Let me tell you, I am so excited for. I just love that you said that because that is exactly why I fell in love with this movie. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, it's so devoid of cynicism and in just it's pure love, and it's still funny, and it still has like all the stuff that's exciting and things that we love, but it has something that's so pure and it's so so rare these days. Mm -hmm. But I think we can do it in the live action space, and I yeah. think we will. Okay. Sorry. Oh no! <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I said it. You said it best. <laughs> The pipe squished me all out of shape. Dang. That's better. Oh. Um, so yeah, as, as I was telling you guys, I, I got to see it in, in Dolby last yeah, last night. Um, and it's interesting because I do think that people did get used to watching Pixar movies at home, unfortunately, on, mm -hmm. on Disney+. Plus. But this feels like a real big screen, big canvas movie, the kind of thing that'll bring people back to theaters, especially if it's in 3D. I didn't actually get to see it in 3D, but yeah. I, I can't imagine how, I've seen footage of it in 3D and how immersive it was. Yeah. W was that something specifically though, that was a goal of this movie, was to really bring Pixar back to the theatrical experience? Um, I guess everything that I've worked on here in the past 23 years has always been trying to make something for the big screen. Mm -hmm. you know, everything that we've, I've worked on has always been yeah. with that, you know, uh, you know that level of fidelity and image, you know, and uh, but for this one, for sure, wanting an experience uh, um, that could be full of scope and and full of heart in the way that um, um, that we love our movies, you know, and uh, but I, there wasn't like a we have to make this one specifically. Uh, yeah, I, I would say the ones that you know ended up going onto Disney Plus, they were made for the big screen and just circumstances. Yeah kind of force them to not yeah. be released that way. So we're just ex so excited because we were like, please don't have that happen to our movie because it is intended to be immersive and you know, it looks, yeah. I think, beautiful on the big screen. One of the things I think that people have always loved about the Pixar movies is how they're always kind of uh, about deeply human experiences, the, despite the fact that you know it may be fire, or it may be water, or it could be you know toys or, or whatever. There's yeah. it's, there's always something very kind of relatable. Yeah, I'm so sorry. No, no problem. There's always something kind of relatable and emotional about it that we can all kind of cling on to. Um, I know that this was a very personal story for both of you, though, right? Like a love letter to your parents in some ways. Can you expand on that a bit? Yeah, this all started off with um, this event in New York that uh, happened about eight years ago. Uh, um, I was invited to talk about the arts uh, and uh, I brought, invited my parents to it. This was in the Bronx uh, and uh, um, 
I saw, I got up on stage and I had this speech and I saw my mom, my dad, and my brother there and uh, I just really saw how much of the world had sort of like, you know, aged them and uh, I got very emotional and uh, thanked them for um, all the sacrifices that they had made for my brother and I in giving us a life and it was a very emotional thing and uh, um, I came back to Pixar and you know, some people were asking about it, and uh, when I told them this anecdote that I just told you, they were like, hey, Pete, that's your next movie. Yeah. And so that started this road. I started asking my parents questions about why they came here, and then we started talking to our crew about a lot of their experiences from first gen and second gen, and uh, really really started getting into the, the grist of it. Yeah, and I, and I really connected to the, the sacrifices our parents make, because um, that was something my dad, you know, he just worked so hard for our family, and. And I don't have the immigration experience firsthand, but I do have a, a, a dad that worked incredibly hard. Well, there's that line in the movie that's great where he says that the store was never the dream, you're the dream. Mm -hmm. And I do feel like that, and my, my parents have always kind of been like that for me, and I think that probably yeah. your parents have been like that for you to some yes. extent, too. Yes, yes, yeah. How would you say that for you? Like your parents also worked a business like that in that way? No, not at all. Like that was the thing. I was there was never any pressure to follow up on on, on it. Yeah. My dad was a cop in Montreal. You know, he never oh, wow. needed us to follow up on that. Yeah. But but it was, but you know, even just recently, my experiences with them have always been. You know, like if you needed anything, we're here for you. Like your successes and oh. your happiness is the most important thing for us. Same yeah. with my sister. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 That that's something that, growing up, that's never expressed. You know, mm -hmm. it's something mm -hmm. that. You know, my, my, my friends' parents always were expressing how much they were appreciating each other. And, uh, you know, it, it, it took me a while and my, and my brother a while to understand, like, oh, their, their actions is the expression. Yeah, you know, and, sure. And uh, that was just something that we wanted to portray. You don't get it until you're an adult, I think that's the thing. Absolutely, yeah. 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 That, that milestone when you do finally reach it. And uh, it's almost cathartic sure. well, once you hit that. And, uh, yeah, that, that, that's been a, a, a nice you know, North Star for us to, to chase in this film. This shop is dream of our family. Someday it'll all be yours. But we all live by one simple rule. Enemies cannot mix. On another track, I gotta ask, how do you animate fire and how do you animate water? Because that's the, the thing that struck me the most about the movie is I don't think I've ever seen elements animated the way they are, there, are, are, are in this movie. And there are shots of water that it's, Hard to say, like, this doesn't look like animation, it looks like water, you know? Yeah. And how do you animate characters that are made of elements? To me, that, that is the, the thing that really kind of, and I don't, I don't think people giving it enough credit, really pushes the boundaries of animation and the craft of animation with that. So yeah, if you could talk. Well, yeah. thank you for actually saying that and, and acknowledging it, because it was incredibly difficult. Yeah. And we knew it was going to be hard from the beginning, and it was something that as soon as Pete pitched the idea, I started talking to people to figure out how to do it. And you know, we ended up really assembling a, an incredibly talented group of, of individuals that, where we did a lot of experimentation, we, we did a lot of testing, and um, it, it took us a while to get those characters to the point we could do it, and had to create a whole new pipeline, quite honestly, because it turned out that every shot was going to have to be an effects shot with these hmm. simulated characters. But they also have to emote and be appealing. But they have to feel like fire and water. So it was a, it was one of the more difficult things I think our studios had to do. Yeah, there's so many clues to fire and water that everyone knows. You know, like I remember being sort of envious about Inside Out, where no one knows what an emotion looks sure. like. Sure. Right. Yeah. But everyone knows the the little ingredients of fire and water, and a little budge for water all of a sudden turns to jello, and uh, um, her fire would just turn into this flat sort of plasma that didn't feel like it was emanating, emanating heat. But, you know, um, um, it was just, it was a lot of fun, to be honest, trying to boil down those ingredients uh, to get to a certain look that could find that balance. Because when we tried real fire, she looked terrifying. She looked like a, like a demon. A, like a woman on fire. Yes, yeah. oh yeah. yes. There was yeah. like, 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 oh, this would look work well in the Lord of the Rings, you know. Um, but at the same time, the, the the wonderful artist is just fun, like there's this magic that happens that uh, um, Daniel did, which he, he took iPhone footage of a, f a fire and then he started painting over each frame and then he showed it in, a, in an animation way, like it was on fours, and like it flickered and like this blink happened and we're like whoa, oh my God, this that tremendous you know thing that we're always trying to find of that when that spark when something comes alive, it happened, but it took a, it took a while. But but uh, you uh, you said it exactly. Pete never wanted 
um, the characters feel like they were on fire. Mm -hmm. we, we wanted to feel like there was no infrastructure, that they could just blow apart and then come back together, and that was what proved to be a really big challenge, but was great direction for our tech teams.